In the natural forest, a tree falls, making a gap in the canopy and letting light in to the forest floor. In the clearing, seedlings germinate and grow. They compete with each other for water, nutrients and space. In the struggle for life, only one or two survive to reach the forest ceiling. Their early competition with other trees has ensured that their stems are straight and free of branches. Only when the crown has emerged above the forest canopy can it develop and allow the tree to grow to a large size. A mature tree contains a large volume of knot-free, high-quality wood, which we call clear wood. But the whole process takes several hundred years, and we can't wait that long. So we plant fast-growing, introduced species, mainly radiata pine, which grow into large trees suitable for sawing in 25 to 30 years. But one of the biggest problems associated with radiata pine is that its branches persist and cause large knots in the timber. Natural pruning, that is the natural elimination of branches, is a very slow, inefficient process in this species. So artificial pruning, removing branches with cutters or saws, is the only practical means of ensuring the production of not free wood from radiata pine. Artificial pruning of the butt log, the bottom six meters of the stem, is generally done in three stages, which we call lifts. The tree heights at which these lifts are done are critical. The tool most commonly used for pruning the first lift is a pair of long-handled secateurs. A skilled operator can prune the first lift in less than one minute and he should be able to prune 250 or more trees in one day. About 600 trees per hectare are pruned. Only straight, vigorous trees, free from leader malformation, are selected for pruning. All rejected trees must be cut out after first lift pruning has been completed. This process is known as thinning and is best done with a lightweight power saw. The object of thinning is to ensure that growth is concentrated onto those trees which will be finally harvested. This is a stand of 600 trees per hectare after first lift pruning and thinning have been completed. The pruned branches and thin trees are a fire hazard for only a short time as they rot down quickly. In fact, they benefit the soil by adding valuable humus to it. The second lift is pruned when the trees are about eight and a half meters tall. The best tools to use are a ladder and jack saw. About 400 trees per hectare are pruned and an experienced operator can prune this number in about two days. The third lift is pruned when the trees are about 12 meters tall. The tools used are once again the jack saw and a ladder longer than the one used for the second lift. At least 200 trees per hectare are pruned and a trained operator will probably prune this number in one day. After the third lift, all the unwanted trees are thinned out. This is a stand with 200 trees per hectare after the third lift has been pruned and thinned. But if the stand had not been pruned or thinned at all, 
it would have looked like this. The overcrowded trees would have had many dead branches on the lower stems, which would have caused defects in the timber. On good sites, the second log can also be pruned, generally in two lifts. The tools used to prune the second log are the jack saw and the Morris platform, a platform on top of a long aluminium ladder. Using this equipment, we can prune up to about 11 metres. This is a mature, marketable tree which has had the first and second logs pruned. But let's have a look at what happens inside the tree when the branches have been pruned off. The normal process of growth causes the stubs to heal over. This is known as occlusion. Once this has happened, all the new wood is clear wood. Occlusion results in a spike of bark and resin about 20 millimeters long on the ends of the stubs but all wood produced from then on is free from defects. It's high quality clear wood. Most of the logs from pruned trees are sent to mills where they're sawn into boards. The clear timber from these logs is of a very high quality indeed. On the international scene, it's comparable with the world's premium softwoods. It's already supplanting some of the traditional uses of our native woods and will undoubtedly take its place as one of New Zealand's premier timbers. To produce large quantities of clear wood, pruning must not be delayed and trees must be allowed to grow as large as possible. High quality radiata pine is being used more and more for the manufacture of furniture not only in the utilitarian range, but increasingly in the production of contemporary and fashionable dining room and bedroom suites, joinery and similar items. Although it has an attractive appearance in the natural state, this can be enhanced by staining. After several coats have been applied, the stained furniture is dried in a kiln. Radiata pine clear wood is easily worked, a factor which increases its versatility. Here, for example, it's being turned to produce large, ornate legs for billiard tables. Its very fast growth rate in New Zealand does not affect its workability, its finish, or its strength. The natural strength of defect-free radiata can also be used to maximum advantage in the construction of large buildings as opposed to its more usual use in light timber framing. In this factory, logs from pruned radiata pine trees are peeled. They're rotated against sharp knives and very thin sheets peeled off. These sheets are glued together for plywood. They can also be used for decorative veneer finishes. Pruning is the key to producing this high quality wood from radiata pine. But 
for maximum productivity in the future, a commitment is required now from the nation to prune and thin at the correct times on a very large scale. In the years to come, this will ensure the production of large quantities of defect-free radiata pine, which will not only be used locally for many purposes, but will also be the basis of an ever-increasing export industry, making New Zealand a major exporter of one of the world's best softwoods, clear radiata pine.